Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm presenting to you guys another Winner Thoughts video. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to join our exciting Discord and Facebook groups down below in the pinned comment down below. I'd love to see you guys there. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what is your favorite type of direct weather video? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video and I will also be paying attention to those because I can bring more of the type of content you guys like, so it's a really good comment actually. Alright, now let's get into it and we're taking a look at our exciting GM's Tech model. And this is from the month of June, I haven't made a Winter Thoughts video since the month of May I don't think. I think I made two in May and that's it, so this is the third one. All we do in these videos is just kind of present to you guys what the models are thinking and it's fun to get my thoughts out there because we're able to kind of dissect it as time goes on. I'm going to make many, many, many of these videos throughout the year just giving you guys new information that's coming out. But let's take a look at what that uh, Jams Tech model wants to say here. Uh, and this is its temperature forecast, its air temperature forecast. And as you can see, uh, warm for the southern United States, especially the south, central, and southwest. Keep in mind, this model does change very, very frequently, so I expect it to, to evolve very much so, at least. But we do have some colder than normal conditions out there for the upper Midwest, the northwestern United States, and a lot of Canada, too. Uh, so that's a good sign, and that really looks like a very typical La Nina pattern with the cold to the north, a little bit warmer and more dry to the south. Uh, you might be wondering, where do I get dry from? Well, I've already seen the precipitation map, and we're going to take a look at that next. So we're about to move on and take a look at the Jamstex precipitation map. All right, and here it is. Again, this is a very typical looking La Nina pattern. Very dry in the southeast, especially in the south central southwest areas. And then the Pacific Northwest is much above normal precipitation, as well as the Ohio Valley and the upper Midwest. Uh, and I'm thinking if I have to put my personal thought out there, we're getting into the month of July. So I'm starting to really be able to kind of make predictions and I'm starting to, able to be able to really get my thoughts out there. One of the things I'm the most confident in is I think the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes are going to have a big winner this year. Uh, I just got to say it. I, th I really do think you guys are going to have a really, really big one. Uh, so Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, areas like that. I think all of you are going to have a very, very big, and Ohio too, of course, uh, are going to have a very big winner this year. Uh, so this is what the Jamstack model has to say. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CFS model for the winner. And you can see it's almost the same story. Warm to the south, especially the south central United States, and then cold up there for the upper Midwest and areas like Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota. If this dish just dips down a little bit further south, I think we're going to have a very big winter uh, on our hands according to these, mo to these models. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the precipitation map on the CFS model. All right, and as you can see, it is very similar here to our... Uh, Jamstack model. Very similar. It's just a little bit further south, but we do have that above average precipitation there for Ohio, Indiana, except this one extends it kind of for Kentucky, Tennessee, and then kind of the deep south states, the northern portions there of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. That would be interesting for sure, but you can see the Pacific Northwest definitely has above average precipitation there. Same story with the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. Again, very, very typical of a La Nina here. The Jamstack model and the CFS model have surprising agreement here. This is like very unusual amounts of agreement and consistency here for this far out on a seasonal forecast. I'm fear I'm feeling more confident than I I have in the past this time of year in this winter being kind of how these models are saying. I think they have a really good idea of what they think is going to happen here. Uh, so I'm feeling quite confident uh, in what these models are projecting, which is very unusual. Usually, you, you know, you have to take things with a giant grain of salt this time of year, obviously, but really... Uh, they seem to really have their act together, and when you see the two major seasonal models like this just completely agreeing upon what they have to say, it's very, very unusual. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that CFS forecast, and we're going to take it month by month. So here's December first off, and as you can see, it wants to start things out really, really cold. Uh, you can see we have very far below normal temperatures there for Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, and then we have the below normal temperatures pretty much throughout the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, like I said, uh, and then a little bit of warmth down there for the southeast and some of the deep south in the south central United States. Uh, but really, this is a cold-looking overall month so far. Again, 
These are some seasonal models that are for sure going to change in some ways, so take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but really these models have been quite consistent with what they're projecting. So actually I am a little bit confident in these, which is again pretty unusual to feel that way this, this very early on. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to move on to the month of January, February, and then we're going to take a look at this, the precipitation month by month, and we're also going to take a look at some of my early maps that I have present to present to you guys uh, for my very early thoughts for this winter. All right, now here is for the month of January, and you can see everything kind of recedes back a little bit. It gets a little bit warmer this month on this model. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, this looks like a warm overall month for the Plains, the Rockies, the Southeast, even the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. It seems like for the month of January 2021, it seems to be receding a little bit here. Uh, so that would be kind of a winter thaw. It's very typical. And then Sure enough, as we get to the month of February, it kind of switches up. We see the cold return for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast, even the Mid-Atlantic here. So uh, definitely this winter does not look like last winter or the winter before. It does not look like it's going to be an overwhelmingly warm winter. Uh, even the models that typically have a warm bias are really calling for a lot of cold to be able to penetrate its way in to the central and eastern United States, especially at times at least. Uh, which is completely the opposite of last winter, where it was warm from December through February, even portions of March. It seems like at least we will have times of cold, even months that are overall more cold uh, this upcoming winter, which is extremely good news for cold and snow lovers. <clears throat> now, I also want to mention that within the next couple of weeks or a few weeks, I will be releasing my first winter forecast. Again, my confidence is increasing enough to where I feel like it is time to release that first preliminary winter forecast coming up soon. So please be on the lookout for that. I am extremely excited, as I know almost all of you probably are as well. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting when I release that. Again, that's coming up within the next few weeks. I will release that before the 1st of August. So be on the lookout for that. Let's get into December's precipitation forecast. And this kind of looks like the opposite, actually, of what the seasonal uh, models were showing. We see dry in the Pacific Northwest, wet for the Southwest, and wet for the Southeast. Kind of looks like a La Nina, or a, sorry, an El Nino pattern here. Very, very odd. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on for the months of January, February, and then we're going to take a look at some of those handmade maps that I made a few months ago. Just kind of overview those, and then we'll get into our comment of the day. All right, now here we are taking a look at the month of January, and you can see now everything has shifted basically to what I said probably the winter pattern will look like. Wet for the northwest through the Rockies and then through the upper Midwest and into a lot of the Great Plains and then the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes regions and more dry for the Southwest and then the Southeast there. Uh, the La Nina precipitation pattern is actually completely the opposite of an El Nino pattern here. And El Nino brings a lot of precipitation through the Southeast. Uh, so this is looking to be the opposite if it's a true La Nina. If it's more of a neutral winter, well, we're going to need to update a lot of these things. If the ENSO doesn't cooperate, uh, that is going to shift the, the outlook quite a bit, actually, I must admit. So we really that's going to be the key feature that we need to really be keeping notes on because if that tends to look a little bit different, well, then our forecast is going to actually look a little bit different as well because the ENSO really, really does control a lot of what's going on. Uh, but as uh, of right now, this January outlook for the precipitation looks very snowy for the Rockies, the upper Midwest, the Great Plains, and the Ohio Valley, maybe even New England there as we have some precipitation rolling through. All right, now let's take a look at February. And you can see this really shifts to where mostly the west is having a lot of that precipitation. The east coast is looking quite dry as well as the southeast there. Uh, again, that's pretty typical with the La Nina, so that would not surprise me. But the good thing is, is right now on the CFS model, I think everybody should be happy because there's some months where a lot of the east and the southeast looks cold and possibly a lot of precipitation, which would mean potentially snowy. Uh, but then there's times where it's not, but that goes towards the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley. So really everybody's getting their fair share here. So I think nobody should be disappointed at this point uh, as far as it looks like this, as long as it looks like this, because it could obviously change and will change in some ways. Uh, but really, it's, it should please everybody. Let's go ahead and take a look at those maps. I released these ones in May, and I made this for a typical La Nina pattern. And 
sure enough, this kind of looks like what the models are kind of trending towards now. So this was a pretty good map to put out below average up there for the upper Midwest and the Great Plains in the Northwest. And then kind of above average temperatures there for a lot of the Southeast and South Central. The only thing that's changed is really the models are not trending at the Northeast being above average temperatures and the mid-Atlantic even either. So we'll really need to watch that because it might be a little bit different than a typical La Nina pattern. There is other factors, of course. So obviously some of those other factors might become stronger factors and then they would need to, we would need to implement that into our outlook. Here's that precipitation map I made in May. And uh, this, again, just looks still, I think pr I'm in pretty good agreement with what this would bring during a La Nina. Above average precipitation there for the Pacific Northwest through the Rockies, through the Plains, and then up into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. I still very much so agree with this, with more dry conditions overall to the south, the southwest, and the southeast. And then here's a temperature map I made uh, maybe about, a, was it about a month ago? I don't know. Uh, maybe a few weeks ago. And this still looks good. This was kind of a temperature map I put out where I'm most confident in the below average temperatures in that pink region up for the uh, upper Midwest. And sure enough, the models are really trending at this being correct uh, with more of the southwest, the south central, and the southeast being above normal temperatures. So all of these maps have really been uh, moving more towards what the models are showing now. So uh, I'm feeling really good about my thoughts the whole way through that we've had so far this year. So we're just going to keep uh, tracking forward uh, with what we've been saying. I think we're on a really good path and I think we have a really good idea of what's coming up again. And that's why I think I'm going to be making my first preliminary winter forecast very, very soon. Now, yesterday's video was our second fall forecast. You should definitely check that video out. It's going to be on screen in just a moment. Uh, now for today's comment of the day from that video, I asked you guys, what fall month is your favorite month? And Anne McLean said that her favorite fall month is the month of October because of the changing leaves. And I absolutely agree. I said October as well, and I really love the changing colors, and it's finally starting to cool down. It's all very exciting to me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.